Okay, so there are basically two two topics here. One is the tools that I mentioned earlier, the, the accounting tools that we're going to go through, which are special tools only available for accountants, and then troubleshooting techniques or the common errors that clients make that we as accountants have to fix. Topic one, we're going to have a couple of tools here. One is going to be the trial balance that's only available for accountants. We're going to have reclassified transactions. And then we're going to have the concept of closing the books, which is something that accountants do very often. So the first thing is there's a special tool called trial balance, not the trial balance report, but just trial balance. And actually, if you go to my uh, YouTube channel, you put Hector Garcia trial balance. There's a whole video, an hour video I made on this entire tool where we go really in depth about how to use it and what are some of the advantages and what are some of the sort of tips and tricks around it. But the trial balance is a tool that you use at the end of a period, end of the year, to review every single balance, add notes, make adjustments, and make it tax return ready. That's for accountants that prepare information for tax preparers or that do um, taxes themselves. Okay, um, you may want to look into the, the the trial balance tool. The batch reclassify is actually a really really awesome tool. Let's see if my QuickBooks is up and running now, um, because this is actually much better to demonstrate than to show slides. Okay, so if I can't get to it, we can just stick with the slides. So the batch reclassify tool allows you to select multiple transactions that are inside a specific uh, ledger account, a specific account, and you can select multiple of the multiple accounts, and then you go down in the bottom and you click the account that you want to change them to hit reclassify and it can reclassify virtually hundreds of transactions from one category to another category within seconds. Um, the big difference here is that a lot of accountants, what they will do is they will do a journal entry um, to quote unquote reclassify uh, transactions. The problem is the audit trail in a journal entry is not as clean. Uh, doing a batch reclassify just makes the original transaction um, into where it's supposed to be instead of having a journal entry and having to follow through. It. The other accountant tool is called voided and deleted transactions. It's basically a report that shows you every time a transaction has been voided or deleted. It's really, really good to see if there's somebody's making mistakes and deleting stuff they're not supposed to. The other really important tool is called the write-off tool. The write-off invoices tool allows you to take multiple invoices and mark them paid against a specific expense account so we can choose the bad debt account. Mark them all paid in one shot. The only caveat to this is that you must do this during the period. So if I want to go back to a, an invoice that's two or three years old, um, I don't want to use this tool. You want to use a credit memo with a current date instead because you don't want to backtrack and change financial statements from, from previous periods. You really don't. Uh, but for current periods, you can write off invoices that are 90 days old, 180 days old. You can actually choose whatever that date range is going to be. And then you can just write them off in batch all in one shot. Get rid of all these open balances that were errors or whatever. Okay. And the other really important uh, tool is called uh, close books. So closing the books is accessed through the settings menu. So through the gearbox and then accounting and settings. And then you're going to click on advanced and accounting. So this, you're going to hit gear, account and settings, advanced and accounting. You're going to go in that order. And then you're going to put a little checkbox that says close the books. And you're going to choose the date period in which you don't want people to even be able to touch anything uh, before that date. And then you can password protect it. So, um, so unless you know the password, you can't do anything with that. Okay. So unless you know the password, you can't see it with that. So uh, somebody's asking, where do you see all those options? Um, don't know why my my QuickBooks Online is acting up. Let me try to see if I can get on it so I can show you where those options are. See, we got a screenshot on that. Yeah, there's no screenshot on that. Okay, th here it is. So in the top left, you're going to see a little briefcase. You're going to see a little briefcase. 
you click on that briefcase and then you're going to see child balance, reclassify transactions. That was the question. Okay. Uh, somebody says, does writing off invoices affect the cash accounting business? Hmm. <clears throat> does writing off invoice affect the cash accounting business? Well, basically, if you write off an invoice, it marks it paid against an expense account like bad debt. So it will show up in your cash basis report. So the answer is yes, Pandora, it will do that. Okay. Um, where are the trial balance and reclassified tools? Okay, that's in that little briefcase I just showed you. Okay, perfect. Okay, just want to make sure we did have a screenshot on that. Okay. Also, the accountant reports, the management reports, and the custom reports are also added in there. Uh, that's 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 available to end users as well, but it's a it's a shortcut. It's it's a place you can access those commonly used uh, tools that are there. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I think I don't know why it's coming up again, but um, one of the common things that accountants do is merge accounts. So basically, renaming one account and making it the same name as the other one. Um, we'll merge them together, okay, and um, and it will add both transactions, both transactions, all the transactions in both accounts as if it's one account in the first place. If you want to remove an account that you don't want to use anymore, you can delete it, but just remember that in QuickBooks Online, there's not a real true delete. It will just inactivate them, okay? So if you don't want to see that list, that, that expense account in your list, um, again, you delete it, but it's not truly deleted. It will still be in the database. And if it's ever been used in the past, a report will still show up with that information. Okay. So here's all the step-by-step -step process on, on merging. We actually did that um, a few hours ago. We took the name of one and, and put it on the other account and we hit yes and we merged it. Okay. And then to delete, that's inside that little uh, drop-down arrow to the right of the account and then if I click on the gearbox and click on include and active that will give me access to uh, showing the accounts that have been deleted the other shortcut you see under accountants tools is new window which basically just creates a new window for your browser so you can have maybe one report in one window and maybe a transaction in another window so you can use different windows or different tabs to access different areas of QuickBooks Online within one company. All right, so let's talk about troubleshooting techniques. Okay, so we're almost on top of the hour, so I'm just kind of watching it. So right, right when we're when we're almost at four o'clock, I'll run I'll run the last polling question. So in this last topic, we're going to identify the common mistakes made in QuickBooks Online and how to fix them. And by the way, I wouldn't leave if I was you. If you wanted to leave, this last section is actually really really useful probably one of the most useful ones because this is the type of things that we do all the time fix our client errors okay all right so the first thing is uh, convert a transaction to a bill payment so the common error is somebody creates a bill a bill hits accounts payable so you owe that money then the client makes a mistake by creating a check or an expense to pay that bill therefore the bill stays open forever the expense is duplicated, accounts payable is overstated, okay? To repair it, we go back to that check that we wrote that was wrong, and then we pick the bill from the drawer, okay? I don't think there's, okay, here, here's a screenshot, okay? So I think the best thing to do is to actually uh, go to the screenshots, because I don't know, for some reason, I can't get into QuickBooks Online. Let me uh, let me try a new a new login here. Give me one second. Okay. And, okay, so I had to clear my cookies on the other side. That's fine. Um, all right, so we're going to go through converting a, a check that was reused to pay a bill where we didn't properly use the bill payment and then how we go back and correct that. So I'll show you that one. And then the next one that we're going to do is voiding a check from a prior, prior period Okay, perfect. So I just wanted to know what demos I'm going to do. Okay, so let me open up the client here.
I'm going to go ahead and open up this test file that I use. So here's the here's the error that was made. First, a, a bill is created. Okay, the bill is created to American Airlines, for example, under travel, and this is let's say twenty five hundred, and then save and close. Okay, then when you did the, the bank download or or whatever, you saw the twenty five hundred dollars there. And instead of doing the proper workflow, which is going into pay bills, right? The proper workflow is to go to pay bills, select the bill, right? Select the account that you're paying from and hit save and close. That's the proper workflow. But the common error is instead of using this workflow, people go straight to check and they'll put American Airlines. And then here, the drawer on the side that's warning you saying, hey, you probably want to use an open bill to use that. And people say, yeah, whatever. And they skip it. And then they come in here and they put travel. And they hit put uh, 2,500. And do save and close. Now, the underlying issue, and I'll just kind of show you. I'll show you a profit and loss with today's date. Something with today's date. Hit run. Underlying issue is my travel has been duplicated. I have travel as a bill and I have travel as a check. That bill is in my vendors as an open balance. See, shows there as an open balance. So that's my problem. Now, how do I fix it? Well, I go back to the original check that was actually supposed to be a bill payment. And in the QuickBooks desktop world, if you use QuickBooks desktop, you would have to actually delete this check and recreate a new check. And if that's been reconciled, you're going to mess up your entire reconciliation. So in here to fix it, all we have to do is here on the right side, click on add, and it'll basically take that bill and incorporate it into that check that you already created, and it'll convert that into a bill payment. So this is no longer a check, it's a bill payment. So that would be, that, that should have been the appropriate uh, first time that we pay the bill. It should have been done you know, like this, but this is how you fix that problem. Okay, um, all right, let me close that. Okay, now let me show you something else. Let's say, for example, I'm going to go into my reconcile screen. Another real common error is I will have transactions. Let me use a different, I used this guy here, and I'll pick that. So I'll have a check from, I will have a check from maybe last year. Okay. So I got a check from last year that's sitting there in my outstanding transactions. Okay. For example, it doesn't necessarily have to be a check, but let's just assume for a minute. I'm going to assume for a minute just to make this easy. We're going to assume this one right here is a check. So I'm going to give this a number. That way it kind of looks like a check. I closed my books earlier. Oh, good. I don't know my password, <laughs> so I can't mess up my books. That's good. Anyway, I'll forget about that. Let's say this transaction here, Best Buy, <clears throat> is um, it's sitting there on my reconcile window. It's really old. I don't want to see it there anymore. If the books are closed, <clears throat> exactly like it's happening now, if I try to delete it, because I will need, I can't delete it because I will need the closing date password. So this is properly being locked, so I can't screw it up. Now, how do I, quote unquote, how do I get rid of it? Because this is an old transaction. Let's say these two are old transactions that I don't want to see there anymore. So the way you do it, the way you fix it is you create a deposit to counterbalance it. What we're trying to solve for is our, our, you created a check that's dated last year or as a private prior period. If your prior period is locked, or is closed with a password and you don't know the password, you're not going to be able to avoid it. You're not going to be able to delete it. Even if it's not locked or closed, then yeah, for sure, you should just avoid making a change to a previous period. Okay. Um, so, so the only way to get rid of this outstanding check from a pre previous period without messing up the previous period is creating a deposit on the current period 
for the same dollar amount and reconciling it with it. So I'll tell you exactly what, what I mean by that. So for example, if I wanted to get rid of these two uh, checks or expenses that are marked in our books for last year, but I can't touch them because the books are closed or I shouldn't touch them because I don't want to mess up my books. The way you sort of fix them is you create a transaction that's a deposit. Okay. And then you create a deposit. I'm going to scroll down to replace those two transactions. So one was travel. And the other one was, I don't know, meals, something like that. Let's, let's, make sure, let's say both are travel. And one was 150, and the other one was 2173, I believe. We'll double check that. And then on the memo, I'm going to put here uh, two outstanding checks from 2015. that were not cleared and removing them on the current period but whatever whatever is your whatever is the actual uh, note process that you normally take um, you would you would put that in there right if you even want to put a memo I mean if you want to attach a copy of your reconciliation report or something like that in which you in which you um, actually tell tell the system um, you, you you show up a record or a printout or, or notes or something and you want to make a big deal about making sure that you are in fact annotating this because it's hard to sort of audit trail these sort of situations so again we're taking uh, checks from a previous period that are outstanding that we no longer want to see in a reconciliation report and we want to reverse them on the current period so so they are no longer sit there as an outstanding check so we created a deposit and we matched up the dollar amounts so this 171.73 will match up these two here and then basically we reconcile again um, to the last time we reconciled so let's say the last time we reconciled had this amount so we'll put the ending balance there again all we're doing is reconciling quote unquote reconciling again do again the last reconciliation just by simply putting the same ending balance you had the last time you reconciled hit ok you're gonna select those two outstanding checks and that one deposit and you're gonna click finish now and that will basically clear the two transactions it will totally get rid of the two transactions and um, and uh, and not mess up your previous period and yes and during the current period you're gonna have a reversal uh, to that expense uh, to that expense that was previously taken so that's the proper way to get rid of an old um, an old check without voiding it to uh, to not mess up a previous uh, previously reconciled period or a previously closed period okay